It's loading. All right. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Jonathan with Audio Advice. Welcome to our Thirsty Thursday happy hour, where this month we are excited to welcome our friends from SBS. Uh, please welcome Larry and Nick. I will introduce them here in just a minute, but we are excited to be partnering with SBS this month uh, for our giveaway. Not only one, not one, but two awesome giveaways that we're excited to tell everyone about. So thanks again for joining us. We, we've got a lot planned for the next hour. Here's what you can expect. Uh, we're going to walk through a couple of questions for, for, from our friends here at SBS, and then we want to open it up to all of you guys, the attendees who hopefully make this a lot of fun. Feel free to submit the questions. Our second giveaway is going to be based on best question. Uh, that we're going to talk about here in just a minute. So be sure to go ahead. We can see all of those questions coming in across YouTube, Facebook. Uh, we can see them coming in. We'll try to get to as many of those as possible, uh, but we're really excited. So first, let me uh, let me welcome Larry from SBS. Larry, where's home? And, uh, and tell us what you do with SBS. Well, uh, home is in Arlington, Texas. So I'm right between Dallas and Fort Worth. And uh, my role with the company is I'm a national training manager. So I'm responsible for uh, working with our retail partners like yourselves to educate on our product, uh, work through demos, do events like this and our in-store stuff whenever that gets back rolling again and just kind of being a general geek uh, retail sales force that's out there. So uh, that's, that's my role with the company. Awesome, well, we're excited to have you. And I think Jim asked, what are we drinking? So it is happy hour, if you've got something, I'm finishing off the last of my, my summer uh, Bell's Oberon, which I'm excited about. Leon, what are you drinking over there? I've got a, a new Belgian Voodoo Ranger. Out of uh, out of Asheville and, and Colorado. Asheville and, uh, Colorado. If you're drinking something, feel free to let us know what, what, what it is uh, you're drinking and let us know where you're from. So it's, it's fun to see folks from not only all over the United States, but all over the country who are tuning in. So welcome. We're glad to have you guys. Nick, what, where is home? And uh, tell everyone what you do with SBS. Sure. Well, first I am drinking a dark and stormy and it's in a discreet cup because uh, I started prepping it around quarter of and I didn't want my wife to think I was drinking uh, earlier than normal. So uh, <laughs> that's that. But uh, I'm at, I'm based here in uh, Portsmouth, Rhode Island, which is uh, sort of near Newport. Although if you live in Rhode Island, you're pretty much close to everything. Um, I am the VP of marketing. So I'm in charge of uh, running the social media, a lot of our digital marketing campaigns, and then helping uh, our fine partners like Audio Advice with things like custom signage or messaging for the website, uh, different assets that you guys can use to say great things about SVS. So, uh, you know, that's really my role with uh, with the team here over at SVS. Awesome. Well, we're excited to have you guys. As some folks may know, we uh, just started working together here in the last six months, really right in the middle of, of the first uh, sort of COVID shutdown in, in May, June. So it's been kind of an interesting experience getting up and running together. But I think uh, it's really worked well, and I know we've been in discussion for probably a couple of years, and we're excited to finally make it happen. Uh, you guys have been a great partner. This has been a lot of fun, and so thanks again for partner partnering with us this month. Um, if you are not familiar with Audio Advice, maybe you're a big fan of SVS and you're new to Audio Advice, we want to welcome you guys as well. Um, again, I'm Jonathan uh, with Audio Advice. We have been in business for over 40 years. We have two stores, one in Raleigh and the other in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'll, have always been uh, a leader in, in home High performance home audio, home theater, and home automation. And so, welcome back, our founder Leon Shaw. Leon, uh, where is home for everyone who, who may not know? And home uh, is Wake, Wake Forest, North Carolina. Wake right Forest, yep, and, just outside uh, of Raleigh. Right outside of Raleigh. And you obviously founded Audio Advice, you know, just over forty years ago. So, what, what keeps you busy? Forty two, forty two, man. What keeps you busy with Audio Advice these, these days? I love to test new gear. And I love to train our, our new people on how to design great home theaters and home audio systems. And uh, I write a lot of content for the website. And uh, I just love this whole business. It's just so much fun. It's ever changing. And uh, I love great sound, great, great home theater. It's just, I feel so lucky to be in this business for the last 42 years and having a blast. Absolutely. It makes it a lot of fun for us. For those of you guys, you can imagine. Leon has Christmas just about every other day when, when, when companies send us new gear to test, you see Leon like ripping the box open like it's Christmas morning. So he really does uh, have a passion for, for what we get to do and what we get to do for fun here. So a uh, fun question just to start things off. I'll come back to you, Larry. I know you guys uh, attend in the past. You guys have always attended a lot of trade shows, you know, CES. You guys hold a lot of events. You guys are known for some like killer demos that you guys do. Yeah, if someone, if you're demoing a home theater for someone for the first time, what is like your go-to demo track to really sort of just knock their socks off? 
So the go-to, I think for us, we have a, a couple, but I think the one that really kind of knocks the house down is always Ready Player One. Yeah. Uh, Ready Player That's One. On my list. I yes. made a list. Got it. <laughs> I, I can wrap. I have a demo list here that has 120 different titles and uh, chapters and demos and everything because I know all of them kind of by heart. But uh, when Nick and my counterparts are out doing stuff they don't remember all the movies like i do but ready player one's a great one we go to the the big race at the beginning yeah. uh, everybody hates yeah. it but ninja turtles from 2014 that couldn't, one's got a couldn't help yourself, Larry. One ninja. yeah so i had to get that one in but that one i love because it's it's extremely over the top for base it's got these two big base sweeps um spider-man far from home we've been enjoying that one just before we uh got off the road and 1917 i think is probably one of the newer ones we're going to jump into and do yeah, quite a bit yeah uh, that's a good one. Subtle scene and horror movies too but we won't go into that uh, yeah and I, I would add on to that we our list has uh pretty much one at least one demo track from all the mission impossible movies so when you're yes. talking about you know those action sequences you know love or hate tom cruise they are legit and they they always mix the sound in a, such a convincing way that it kind of puts you right there um, so they, they, uh, they're, I mean, I think we want have one from every movie. You yep. could probably name them, but we don't have to go there either. <laughs> yeah. So Larry, I got a question for you. Have yeah. you done, uh, the intro to the greatest showman? I, where there's another one. Is that on the list too? I love yeah. cause if it's a great subwoofer, you hear like the decay of the bleachers as they're stomping on them. It's just oh, really it's so great. great demo. And I think we have three different demos we do from the greatest showman and, Unfortunately, oh, wow. in trade shows, Nick and I can sing along along with Dan and yeah. Dan. Him a couple times. <laughs> yeah, there's a, a track right in the middle, the the Swedish Nightingale song, uh, where it's just her on the stage by herself, and we love doing that one. Not really because it's a subwoofer demo, but because it shows the importance of having a good center channel. That's and right. It's it's a phenomenal mix if you listen between a three way center channel and a two way center channel. It's very different. Yeah, Ben says uh, "Into the Spidey Verse" was always is a good one too. Yeah, that's great and family yeah. friendly too. That's something yeah. else we try to shoot for is we try to make them family friendly as well. Uh, any any other great ones to add, Leon? In your opinion? Well, uh, that you took my list. The Infinity War is the Battle of Wakanda. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, and uh, yeah, for for audio, you know, there's there's tons. I like CSM, Lay Me Down for bass. I'm a, I, yeah, I'm an old guy. So Chicago, I'm a man, has a great bass line in the beginning. That's really good. And uh, yeah, for, for airiness of speakers, I love the uh, Getz and Gilberto, uh, Girl from Ipanema. That's just got you know, recorded it you almost as old as I am. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's just such a good recording. Yeah, David's got Midway. That's a great movie, too. Yes. Uh, oh, yes. What goes into uh, not just a great track, but what goes into a great demo, in your opinion? Whew. Well, this is a big one for us is, you know, whenever we set up a demo, I want to set up what you're going. And we were talking about this before we got going. I want to set it up so you know what to listen for, what you're going to see, because there's people that haven't seen all those movies that we just listed. So I want to set up the scene so you know what you're going to listen for, when when to know when something's going to go racing by you or something subtle, uh, put you into the movie or music experience so that you are immersed. And I never finish a scene. I want you to go and watch the movie on your own and enjoy it in your home theater. So I, I'm notorious for stopping it just before something major is about to happen and kind of making it a point that you want to watch more you want to sit down and experience more of those speakers or go home and change your system at home so it's just oh. something to love go for it nick no i mean i would i would add on to that i mean it's an opportunity at least at the beginning to educate somebody before they've really had it revealed to them so you know something like transient speed in a subwoofer which is that ability to stop and start on a dime if you're setting it up and telling somebody to listen for that you know it's ability to not just play the right note but stop playing the right note at the exact time that you're supposed to, to make you believe what you're hearing is actually happening. Um, and then when they actually start being immersed in the scene, they listen for it. They're like, Oh yeah. And then when it's over, you sort of confirm what they heard. So I think it's a good opportunity to educate people. And it's, it's, it provides real value in, in terms of understanding why audio can be so immersive and how it actually engages you. It does, because we need more fans in the great audio and home theater fan club. So if you've got a good audio system or home theater system, we have friends over, that's really good advice. If they haven't experienced it, tell them what they're going to hear. 
pick something great and they'll hear it. They'll be blown away and they'll be in our secret club of uh, great sound and great picture. For no, sure. It's so true. And, and every demo is different. So, you know, I, the, when I was talking about transient speed, I was literally thinking of the movie baby driver where, you know, that opening sequence, oh, where he's, like, yes. he's like, you know, shifting gears and spent, you know, hitting on the brakes. And then it just sort of that thump and it just stops and starts on a dime. Um, so something like that gives you the opportunity to not only play up the action you're going to enjoy, but also, you know, learn something about the sound. That's also a great movie for having full range surround speakers because oh, the yeah. beginning there's just so much effects in the uh, surround channels in that movie. Leon, uh, Rich Carpenter put Mad Max. I know that's one, that's a classic go-to for us in the showrooms, right? Yes. That's a great one. That's a great one as well. All right, Nick. So obviously this is uh, our monthly giveaway. We're excited to, to partner with you guys again. You guys have been in incredibly generous. So we're going to be giving away a 5.1 system from you guys at SVS. Tell us a little bit more about that system and what people can expect out of that. Yeah, so this is actually uh, really exciting for us because uh, in July, uh, well, every year, there it's a group called uh, ISA, and it's the Expert Imaging and Sound Association. And it's basically a group of uh, 61 different audio and home theater magazines from around the world. We'll all get together and vote on you know the best products they've reviewed in a, in a given year. And so, you know, every year they pick from uh, something like 15, 16 different categories for loudspeakers, subwoofers. And for the first year ever, uh, a company took home best loudspeaker and best uh, home theater subwoofer in the same year, SVS. And uh, that was actually our, our prime pinnacle tower speakers, which is the uh, front left and right of your 5.1 system. And then the point one is obviously our SB2000 Pro subwoofer. So. To be able to have a package that includes both of those products that won those awards was was super exciting for us. And uh, we thought, you know, the audio advice community would really enjoy something like that to kick off your your system yeah. builder. So, you know, for us, it's uh, it was just an opportunity to really sort of shine a light on these uh, award winning products and and, uh, you know, the technology behind them. So, um, I mean, we can dive into them in a little bit more detail. Uh, Larry's really good at that. Hint, hint, um, if you'd like us to, but uh, you know, we were just excited to be able to have a package that has both of those products included. Yeah, congratulations. Like you said, I know that's a tremendous award. Obviously, recognizes you guys, uh, not only in the subwoofer category, but also speakers, which is really unique that you guys do such a good job with both. It's going to be a great system, right? It's something that, that whoever wins that you hear at the end of the hour should really be proud of. And again, thank you guys uh, for giving that away this month. And then we've got a second giveaway, as I mentioned, for best question. Uh, you guys want to tell us a little bit more about the uh, Prime Wireless series? Sure. Oh, that, that's right. no, there we go. Yeah. I feel like you're pointing yes. at me. I was um, trying. The mirror image gets me. Yeah, it, it throws me off too. So I can never point to what I'm trying to point to either. But uh, we're giving away a pair of uh, Prime Wireless speakers. And uh, the Prime Wireless speakers, if you haven't really had a chance to see them, they're, they're our powered bookshelf. They're a multi-room stereo solution that works like any other, well, similar to a lot of other multi-room systems that are out there you might be familiar with, but the difference being this is a true two-channel, high-resolution experience where you can put multiple pairs of speakers throughout your house. Uh, we also have an amplifier that you can connect to existing speakers, but with these, you can do Bluetooth, they have an optical connection, an analog left and right. Um, you've got a subwoofer out that's active, so when you plug a subwoofer up to it, it automatically crosses over the speakers, and I don't want to get too geeky, but uh, you can also do multi-room control using DTS PlayFi and stream whatever you want from Pandora, Spotify, Tidal, Amazon, Sirius XM, and make it something you can play everywhere or save presets like you do in your car radio. And I'm, I've got a pair sitting here on my desk and I have six presets and they're all from six different streaming sources. We've got a Pandora station, a Spotify station, a Koba station, and my kids have these too. And they have their own favorite playlist that they just hit a button on the front of the speaker and it just starts. And it's one of the only ones on the market that can do all of that and more. I can add on to that too. I mean, we really tried to put fidelity first with the prime wireless uh, yeah. powered speaker system. I mean, aside from having a true stereo image from two speakers, um, through the DTS PlayFi app, we have what's called critical listening mode. And one of the big drawbacks of wireless audio is its lack of ability to actually stream at ultra high resolution. Um, you know, we have a 24-bit 192 kilohertz DAC in there so we can stream that bit rate. And that allows you to get the full fidelity of, you know, your Amazon Music HD, Cobas, you know, some of the high-res title, the, the sites that allow you to do so. 
Um, so when you're talking about other wireless audio solutions, not every one of them or very few can actually stream at that quality. So that was one of the big things that we wanted to make sure we could do with Prime Wireless. Um, so it's, it's truly sort of a modern audiophile solution uh, when you're talking about fidelity. Yeah, awesome. So $600 value, right? So yes. uh, that, that's a heck of a giveaway in addition to the full home theater system over $3,000 value. So uh, we'll have some happy folks here before the end of the day. Uh, for those of you who, who entered the giveaway for the SBS home theater system, uh, one of the ways to enter was you had to go to audioadvice.com and you had to go through our brand new home theater design tool and, and save a home theater design. So this is something that we are really excited about. It's something that we have been working on for the better part of a year. Uh, and so Leon, tell us uh, from an audio advice perspective, you know, what was what was the problem that we were trying to, to, to solve for with the development of that home theater tool? And then help us uh, think through, you know, what what that looks like as you go through that experience. Yeah, it, it took us quite a while to nail this down there. You would not believe all the going back and forth with the developers and our team figuring out the best way. So we wanted to try to recreate that experience. If you were in the store talking to a home theater expert and you had your room laid out and you were figuring out the best possible home theater for yourself. So we, we ask you, you know, if it's a TV or front projection. And the, the big thing for me was getting the immersive factor right. You know, we always like to ask people where they want to sit in a movie theater. And we've done hundreds, actually thousands of home theaters, and we've kind of figured out these different kind of viewing angles that correlate to the back of the theater, the middle of the theater, and towards the front of the theater. And we relate that to your seating position and the screen size. And you there's a graph that goes on, and it shows it's not immersive, immersive, less immersive, fully immersive. So you can kind of see that you can actually have a 3D view of the screen from your seat looking at it. So that helps you get the screen size right. Then we wanted to play around with all the speaker positioning and we use the, the Dolby rules for where they need to go. And it will show you exactly where you need to put your speakers. The first version just uses kind of in-room speakers. We're gonna follow up with the in-wall and on-wall version, but we want to get it out. And uh, it's we've had just thousands of comments actually that's been super helpful for people to visualize what the room could look like. And we, I saw three or four people today said, this was so great, I'm pre-wiring my room. This helped me put the wires in the right place. I'll be back to you guys in a couple of months when I'm ready to add the speakers to it. So it's, uh, it was just trying to recreate that in-store experience online. Yeah, absolutely. And like you mentioned, you know, yourself, Scott, uh, Heather on our team, spent a lot of time over the last year working on that. And it's been great to see the response. We've had an incredible response. And thanks for some of the feedback that we're getting in the comments on what went well and maybe some areas that we can continue to improve. But we literally have hundreds of people per day, not only interacting with the tool, but getting down to actually saving a theater. So it's created a lot of engagement and it's it's really exciting to see so much enthusiasm for, uh, for our home theater tool, but more generally just for home theater in general, right? Because it is such a, a great experience and especially as more and more of us are spending a lot of time at home, uh, we wanna figure out and help people how to sort of maximize that experience, you know, when they're watching a movie with the family or, or on their own. So. Um, SVS, coming back to you guys, you guys are known for, you know, your incredible sounding subwoofers. Tell us, uh, you know, what goes into your subwoofers and sort of what, what sets them apart from others that you may find out there. Go, Larry, you go first. Yeah, uh, I, I like filling in your shoes after you talk. Well, part of it is just the legacy of the brand. You know, we've been making subwoofers for over 20 years now, and that's where the brand started was from this passion to create something different from what else was out there. And we've continued that on through the legacy of, you know, kind of re-energizing the subwoofer category with new products, whether it be the 16 Ultra from four years ago, the 4000, 3000 series, the new 2000 Pro and everything that we've kind of been creating over the years. It's to deliver an experience, whether it's our entry level 1000 series or a top of the line 16 Ultra, that no matter what room you're in or who's unboxing it, the experience is the same whether it's that deep thundering bass where you know, you're know you getting that under 20 hertz experience, uh, being able to take the volume as loud as you wanna do it and still get the extreme low frequencies. Being As Nick was talking about earlier, the transient response, the accuracy, being able to deliver on those movies we were talking about earlier and the musical tracks to deliver what the sound engineer and the director and the musician intended and then being able to do it, whether it's in a 5.1 or a two channel experience and make everything better. So we think that our goal is to 
give that SVS experience to every single customer and kind of be a little different in what we offer in regards to price points, performance stories, output, warranty. Uh, it, it's probably a very convoluted answer based on the question you just asked. But no, I, I think you hit it pretty well there, Larry. And I, you know, one of the big goals that we've always had is, you know, well, why we started as a company was to sort of bring a more immersive and more exciting level of performance that uh, was actually within reach of, of you know, humanity. Like uh, when we started, subwoofers were sort of this esoteric thing that were really expensive, massively huge. It wasn't something that a lot of people considered. We wanted to come out with products that, you know, performed equally well for home theater and music. So you get, you know, all of those things that Larry was talking about. Um, you know, there's a sort of sense that with subwoofers, it's like this tractor pull mentality. And like the only thing that matters is how loud can it play and how low can it go? And those are certainly the two most important things. But when it comes to the overall performance, we like to bring uh, a sophisticated level of accurate or, you know, just pinpoint accuracy. You really want it to hit all those notes, not just in terms of frequency response, but like we were saying, transient speed to stop and start when you're supposed to. So all of those things are critically important in all the subwoofers we design. And then we also look at you know, pushing the envelope with innovation. Um, and some of the innovation you can see, like the uh, subwoofer control app, the ability to you know adjust parametric EQs, have custom presets for music and home theater. Um, but some of them you can't see, like our uh, we have an eight-inch voice coil on our 16 Ultra subwoofers, which you know at the time was unheard of. But that's how we were able to get a level of control from that size driver, you know, to be able to achieve the accuracy that you need. Because when you have a driver that size, it is a tendency to sort of flex and bow sometimes, and you don't get always the accuracy. Um, so all of those things are you know, of utmost importance as we launch new products, and we're just always looking to push the envelope. So I think that's sort of what's helped us remain you know, near the top of the game for subwoofers for so long. Got it. So uh, Joey asks, uh, you know, maybe which one do you sell more? But just in general, what's the difference between a sealed and ported? And you know, what's the best use case for, for each? Well, I see Nick being quiet and waiting on me to answer this one, too. So. Um, <laughs> So we, we make all of our sealed and ported subwoofers. If they're in the same family, they use uh, same amplifier, same driver, um, but they're tuned a little differently because you know the sealed cabinet is its own ecosystem. The ported cabinet has to uh, react to air escaping and staying inside the cabinet. So uh, if you're really comparing the two, uh, a sealed subwoofer will tend to be a little bit quicker. A uh, ported subwoofer will have more output, more power, more volume. And they're both phenomenal. We, we like to say a sealed sub does everything well and nothing poorly. Uh, ported sub, though, will take on a larger room, give you more of that theatrical base kind of IMAX experience. So in this room here that I'm in, this is my game room, sports room, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we have a 5.1.2 in here. We use a sealed sub because the room's only 13 by 13. But downstairs in my living room where it's open into kitchen and dining and a hallway, we have a ported cylinder subwoofer down there because a ported subwoofer can fill in that larger space because it moves more air. And so that's really what it comes down to. And there, there's accuracy, there's depth of base, there's uh, quite a bit to it, but I, I don't have a preference one way or the other. Sometimes it's size uh, where you can fit it, but a, a ported sub is typically where people go for movies or larger spaces and sealed for the exact opposite in some cases. Just to answer the question, we do sell considerably more sealed subwoofers. One, they're more compact in stature. So if you don't have a lot of space, sometimes you just can't fit the ported subwoofer. Uh, they're generally a, a little less expensive too, which, you know, obviously helps. Um, and then I think, you know, because they're known as sort of a audiophile centric solution, you know, they're a little, like you were saying, accurate, speedier in the transients. Uh, you know, it, it helps for those people who are using it in strictly two channel systems. They'll go with the sealed versus the yeah. ported. So, um, you know, that that's essentially why we, uh, we, we sell more. Yeah. And as I said, you can kind of get the best of both worlds too with any of our models, the 2000 Pro or above. Uh, with the subwoofer control app, uh, you can contact us and we can send you uh, these foam port plugs to plug up the ports on the sub. And then you go into the app and you can actually use our port tuning in the app to maybe take our larger ported subwoofer. And if you want a little quicker response time, you can seal it to give yourself a larger sealed cabinet as well. And so if you have your favorite music setups that you like, you can save a preset for music listening and then open it up and uh, do your movie watching with a deeper, more low frequency output. Awesome. Uh, Nate, this question was for you and someone else mentioned this earlier as well. You know, are, with people being at home more and more, especially during COVID, 
are folks, and this is obviously for everyone as well, but are folks, you know, are you guys finding that folks are doing more dedicated home theaters in their home or, uh, you know, really just trying to ramp up the, the quality and experience of maybe a more multi-purpose room? What are you guys seeing? I mean, I, I hate to use the cop out, but it's a, it's a lot of both. I mean, I think people have started to realize that having that one dedicated space in your house where you can just completely turn it off, well, turn it on and you can sort of turn off, you know, everything that's going on either in your head or just avoiding the stress of life is a real asset. And, you know, I think the sound is a huge part of that. So, you know, adding things like Dolby Atmos or, you know, speakers for overhead height effects or, uh, or a subwoofer to kind of really bring you into the scene with that immersive bass has a lot of appeal to people. Um, you know, and I also think uh, the multi-purpose, I guess where that is going is sort of like uh, around the house. Is that more like multi-room audio? Um, I'm not exactly sure where they're going with that, but I've definitely noticed an uptick in people paying attention to the sound quality more so than they ever have given uh, all the time we're spending at home. Yeah. Leon, thoughts on that as well? Yeah, we have too. We're just, home theaters are on fire. Everyone wants a great home theater in their house now. Because it, it, it's something you can go in every night and just totally forget the world and escape. I mean, I, my wife and I spend three hours every night in our home theater. If we're here in Raleigh, we're there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I also think people are spending less on like live concerts and stuff like that too. So you're not getting that fix of an, uh, an experience that sort of takes you away. Um, so I, the next best thing is just doing a Blu-ray concert in your house at this point. That's right. There's all tons the of them, they're great. So some folks have asked, you know, uh, what, what do I get if I have two, two subwoofers compared to one? Do I need four? You know, what's the, what's the magic number? What are your thoughts on that? Eight. 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 Doesn't, Eight. No. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the more you get, the better, you know, room saturation you're going to get. But really the advantage, and I think the most people think it's like output, but the real advantage is more uh, balanced and even uh, frequency response throughout the room because you don't have standing waves, you don't have peaks and nulls where it either sounds really boomy or it sounds like, you know, there's a lack of bass. Uh, having two subwoofers just makes a, a higher density of waves, which smooths that frequency response in a, in a larger listening area within the room. Yeah. Two is always better. And four oh, is even much better. Yeah, we did hold a theater that had four, was it the PB Ultra? The, the big yes. guy? Yeah, the right? PB 15s, yeah. yeah. I'm assuming that's a large room. It is. It's, it's pretty dedicated. large. It's 27 by 18. It's a good size room. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I probably only need two in that, but hey, some people love their base, so who might argue? That's right. Um, Couple of questions on here. You know, what's what's your uh, favorite subwoofer, and I guess uh, you know, favorite finish, right? What, what are you guys What are you guys seeing in terms of uh, popularity out there? Well, our most popular subwoofer that we currently sell is our uh, SP2000 Pro, and I think that's because it's right in the sort of middle where uh, you know it, it's it's below a thousand dollars, but it still gives you the uh, the app control, you know. Base below, base extension below 20 hertz, and then just incredible output for you know medium sized rooms and and below. So I think you know that's a lot of people's applications. So um, I think that's why it's probably our uh, our most popular. Larry, I don't know if you have additional insights on that. No, I, they, it's been I think even the previous model, the 2000 series, was our most popular model for nearly seven years. And my favorite one to demo is the SB1000 because no one assumes when you walk in and you see that small cabinet that's 13 inches cube that it's going to pressurize a room, and it does. I've got one right here under my desk uh, with my prime wireless hooked up to my computer, and I knock stuff off the walls with this setup. Cool. Um, a couple other questions here. I have one here picked out here. How often do you guys refresh your subwoofer line? Well, we, uh, I mean, if you have paid attention to what we're doing, uh, you know, we just were talking about our 2000 series. That was uh, the most recent that we've updated with our, our app control and new amplifier technology, which is uh, basically a fully discrete design with uh, uh, MOSFET outputs, which just lets you get a little bit more effortless bass and, uh, you know, output into the driver. Um, so what we've done is take a trickle down approach. We launched our reference 16 Ultra subwoofers, gosh, I should know, five years, six years ago. And four since years. then, we, four years ago, we've taken all the technology in that amplifier 
and trickled it down to each subsequent series, the 4,000, the 3,000, and now the 2,000 Pro series. Um, so we really are trying to bring that reference level of technology to you know increasingly lower prices. And that's sort of been our mentality. So if you look at our current product line, most people could guess where the next refresh is coming from. Um, but we don't put a specific timeline on like, we need to have this new version done by then. We just immediately start working on the next project when we finish the previous one, um, because we need to make sure we get it right. And if it takes a little bit longer, that's okay. Um, we're gonna support our existing product lines as long as they're live. And when we launch a product, we wanna know that it's gonna be one of the you know industry standards. So that's really been our mentality. Yeah, that's, that's great. Uh, Sarah says my house would fall down with eight subs. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we can give it a try, right? It could. I knock stuff off the walls with one, so I can't imagine what eight would do. Yeah. Valerie says she, uh, her husband doesn't think he needs to have four subs. That would be trouble. Um, if for someone with a smaller room, there was a question uh, from Nick. I'll put this up one up there. So for someone with a smaller room, maybe what's the right time to go from you know, in ceiling, in walls, to maybe more dedicated towers? What are your thoughts on that? Larry, this one's you. Well, it, it's really going to come down to, you know, your listening habits in that room. So this room is not big. This is just one of the bedrooms in the house that uh, we've set up for gaming and watching movies and stuff. And so it's 12 by 12, in this case, a nine by 10 room. You could do towers, uh, center satellites for your surrounds, uh, or you could do a, you know, we have a package, which uh, you guys do well with. It's the uh, prime satellite 5.1, which is uh, five, and I hate calling them satellites because when most of you think satellites, you think those little small speakers. These are small bookshelves. Uh, you can get a full package, five of them, and a 12 inch subwoofer. You know, it's $9.99. That'd take on a room that's about 18 by 18 or smaller and do really well in that space. So a nine by 10 room, it'd be great. But in here, I do towers, a center. I've got a pair of satellites up here on the wall. And then above me on either side, I have a pair of our height effect speakers called the Prime Elevation. And then I have one 12 inch SB2000 series subwoofer. Uh, so it, it comes down to tuning, uh, what volume level you're listening at, too. So if you're cranking it like I do, you know, go towers if you can fit them. Yeah, I'd agree on the towers, Larry. I, th I think especially for music, you get a lot more benefit mm -hmm. out of that. You can tune them to the room. And the prime elevation is one of my favorite. That's such a utility player. You can it's use that in so many different ways. Yeah. I was, had uh, a buddy of mine from Florida call me today. He's trying to put together a system for his desk and was looking at our satellites and we kind of talked and I, I think the elevation is great for a desktop solution too. Uh, but the elevation is a cool speaker all the way around because it can be used as a, uh, a front speaker, a height effect speaker, a surround speaker, uh, a tabletop speaker. And it's very different from a lot of the other solutions out there for Atmos and height effects. Uh, Gracie says, what is the benefit of a larger subwoofer and can you get too big for your space? How do you determine the correct size? So go for it, Nick, and then I'll pick it oh, up. Oh, you want me to take this one? Yeah. Well, I would say, uh, yes, you, there's a sort of a law of diminishing returns there. I mean, if you have a, a nine by 10 room and you're putting a, you know, dual PB16 ultras in there, you're spending a lot of money for bass that you're never going to actually hear because you could go with a much smaller subwoofer and still saturate that room and, you know, nearly make yourself deaf if you truly wanted to. So um, I would say that, you know, it also depends on the speakers you're pairing them with. Uh, as Larry was mentioning, if you have a pair of satellites, you know, matching them with a PB16 Ultra, again, not going to be your best move. You're just going to have a little bit more headroom and, and too much power there that uh, you'll never use. And not to mention it could, you know, potentially drown out the satellites if you don't have it set correctly. Um, so I do think there is a, uh, you know, there is a, a, a certain subwoofer that fits well within your room, within your system, and within your listening preferences. And those things all factor in to what the best subwoofer is. Uh, but the, it can be a factor of having one that's just too big for, for what you really need. Yeah. Yeah, and I would I would also say that if you have a smaller room, I go with two smaller ones because it seems like small rooms tend to have more dips and peaks in them, and the two will help smooth it out. So I'd, I'd always say go with two smaller ones over one big one in a small to medium sized room. Totally agree. Yeah, and it's sort of odd to think about, but when you have that, it actually can free up floor space too. Because if it's a small room and you have this one monstrous box, it can sort of get in the walkways. But if you have two smaller ones, you can set them back a little bit. It actually can be more room friendly to have two in that in that. Yeah, and you can even put them inside a cabinet if you need to as well. If you go with a smaller cabinet subwoofer. Yeah, because you don't have any monstrous boxes at all that I know about. No, none of our subs are big. Not one. Uh, Ricky asked, uh, in terms of placement, how, what's the best placement when you have dual subs or, or more? 
that, that's a whole other can of worms there too. So uh, the way we figure out placement is uh, I do a subwoofer crawl. And if you've never done a subwoofer crawl, it's fun. <laughs> well, Leon's giggling, so we, we know all of us have been doing this a while. Um, a subwoofer crawl will help you figure out where your subwoofer should go in your room. And what you do is you uh, either disconnect your speakers or um, just put on a track that you know really well it's got some bass or I have an app on my phone I've got an iPhone called Sonic and all it does is play bass notes and I put on a 40 Hertz tone and what you do is you take your subwoofer and you physically put it in your chair or on the floor right in front of where you sit and play that tone and kind of walk around you're supposed to crawl on your hands and knees but when you get to a certain you age to you crawl. Know, yeah That's you don't do it. It. you know don't I, cop out Larry yeah, so I yeah, so I crawl everywhere we go. I'm sure all of you have seen it on our Instagram and Facebook feeds, but uh, I walk around till I find the point where in the room the bass is impacting your body the most, where you feel it throughout your body, where you kind of feel the pressurization in your ears. And once you do that, that's kind of the spot in your room where your subwoofer should be placed. So you get that experience in your chair. And if you're doing multiples, you do one at a time and uh find that second point for the next sub. And when you pair them together, you've got a, an unbelievable experience. And then you find the best spot and know where it should be. Yeah, there will usually be two spots that are the same, too, when you're doing this. There'll be two yeah. that'll be very similar. It yeah. is worth noting that two subwoofers are much more forgiving when it comes to placement, just because oh, yeah. of the reasons yes. we explained with the saturation and whatnot. So, you know, you get that first one placed, it's a little bit more, uh, you know, you, you have more options for placing that second one just because of how the waves interact in the room. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm, I'm a corner guy when it comes to sealed subs. I tend to start in a corner. Uh, if I'm doing duels, typically opposite corners or diagonally. Uh, but another application is great kind of inside your front stage uh, if you're doing yeah. duels as well. Uh, on, the, on the floor in a cabinet, what do you guys recommend? Yes. So. Mm, I mean, the uh, there we've I've heard differing accounts on putting it inside furniture. Um, I did see somebody mention. I'm going to throw a gratuitous plug out here. How you start stop like wall vibrations and sort of pictures from vibrating. We have a product called the uh, SVS Soundpath uh, Sub. Hey, there you go. Subwoofer you go. isolation system. They're basically little replacement feet for your subwoofer. So uh, a lot of times, if you're putting them in furniture and you're noticing that rattling. Uh, those can help decouple it, which basically means all that energy yes. that's going into the floor and the walls now goes out into the room, hits you in the chest, um, which, you know, adds to the impact. But also it keeps those distracting sort of room rattles uh, from getting, you know, too much in your face. Um, but in general, like if it sounds good and it's hidden away and that's an important fa lifestyle factor, then hide them away and, you know, enjoy what you got. Well, another thing you can do if if you can do this and you can cut the bottom out of the cabinet and put the subwoofer onto the floor too which couples it better. But those feet work great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, let's see here, we got we got lots of questions coming in. If you guys see one that, that uh, jumps out, feel free to, to tackle it as well. A lot of folks asking about just receivers in general. Um, is, there, is there a sort of a go-to either type of receiver or obviously brand, and that's a, that's a tough question probably, but any thoughts on those? Well, I would just say you want something that allows you to really play with the crossover in the receiver. I think it's... Yes better to do it there and the more you can fine tune it in terms of the crossover settings not just small and large the better it is because then you can really zero in and i did see a question about splitting the subwoofer output if it only has one and, and larry what's your hot take on uh splitting one subwoofer output into two absolutely uh yes yeah just run a y split off the back of your uh your receiver from your point one out and you can run multiples or split even more if you'd like to do that too. You can daisy chain. You can actually connect one to the other with no signal degradation. So there's a, a couple options there that uh, fret not if you only have one subwoofer out. That's a good question there, Brent. Yeah, I don't know if we'll go there, but I thought it was funny. So let's just say uh, yes. That one. <laughs> awesome. Oh, uh, so I, I saw another question about duels that whether they need to be the same size and that's less important than making sure they're either both sealed cabinet or both ported yes. cabinet. Um, yeah. When you're talking about the driver size, certainly you don't want a you know a 12 inch and an 18 inch necessarily. Well, I guess you could, but um, when you have the ported and sealed, the uh, phase can get thrown off, so you can notice some time alignment issues. Um, so that would be the more important factor than driver size when when matching different subwoofer. 
and I see some questions coming through about effects and Atmos speakers and the toppers. And if you guys want, I can riff on that for a second. Um, yeah, please do. Yeah, so as, yeah, you're as uh, talk about this great uh, prime elevation speakers. Yes. So the there's over the last few years, and if you're not aware with home theater, there's a new uh, channel that's been introduced to the home marketplace. It's called Height Effects. And what it is, it's speakers that typically are designed to go above you to create an immersive bubble like you would get at a high-end movie theater like a Dolby Cinema or the Cinemark XD, where not only do you have speakers around you, but also above you so that you are completely immersed in the experience. And whenever it first came out, people were using in-ceiling speakers for that. And then an easy solution that could get it kind of out there to the marketplace pretty quick was reflective toppers that you would put on top of your speakers. Well, those are you know, easy solutions, but not necessarily the, the best for everybody. Uh, and they're kind of limited in what they can do. So our design team was kind of looking at, do we want to go in ceiling? Do we want to do a topper? And because of the limitations of those two technologies, decided to create or decided to create what's called the prime elevation. And it is a full range speaker that goes on your wall and is designed much like a movie theater speaker. So when you go to a movie theater, you look around, the speakers aren't built into the wall. They're on the wall angled towards you. And that's exactly kind of the design behind the elevation. And I'll point right there at the uh, top up there, you can see above the foam finger, uh, that is our prime elevation speaker. And that's my height effects. And it's designed to go on the wall and shoot towards your listening position, whether it's the front effects coming down towards you, the rear effects coming at you. It can be a surround speaker, a side speaker, a front speaker, whatever. Um, and the difference between it and an in ceiling or a topper is it can handle a lot more frequency and a lot more volume without being uh, limited. So, and it has yeah. the same tweeter your other speakers have, so it's perfectly matched. That's yeah. what's really great. And you can blend our ultras, our primes, mix them yeah. all together, make your own package. And so that's what a lot of people do. Like in here, I've got a prime system. Downstairs, I have a mix of uh, prime and ultra. And then, and then uh, the elevations go great with all of them. But we also designed them to be a neutral speaker uh, so that it can blend with any brand of speakers you may have out there. And if you've never tried to install an end ceiling speaker, which I know you guys do thousands of, uh, it's a time consuming effort too. And uh, this is a 10 minute job. Uh, so you just get four screws in, you're, you're done. And it's going to typically sound better than anything else in a similar price point because it is more capable and has more crossover capabilities too. Ooh, games. Yeah, it's a good question. Mm -hmm. Ben, any uh, gamer? Use the test. A, I, I, we game in our house. Um, I feel like I'm talking too much. So, but uh, no, all good. You know, if you have an Xbox, you've got the capability of doing Atmos and uh, Tomb Raider was some of the first Atmos gaming experience I have, and it was great for every channel, including the subwoofer. God of War, my PS4, love that. But uh, <laughs> I see somebody saying I have 48 speakers in my home. Probably not too far off. Um, but the best gaming experience I've ever had, and we talked about this in our broadcast, is a game called Hellblade. And it's on PS4, Xbox computer, and all that. But it's designed for headphones, but I don't game with headphones. And it's a binaural experience. And if you have Atmos, uh, it literally gave me chills. Like, my wife thought I was sick because I, the hair on the back of my neck was constantly, and I was cold. I even wrapped up in a blanket playing, and it wasn't that it was scary or anything, but the experience was just totally immersive. And uh, you should look up the game Hellblade. It's, uh, it's a pretty amazing game. Great for sound. Good suggestion. Yeah. I've got uh, older elementary school and middle school kids, and so obviously a lot of Fortnite. Not that it's a great mm -hmm. for audio. I'm sure is that. You're playing it right now. Keep them, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, well, tell us a little bit more. Not only I mean, we talked a lot about subwoofers, and it's been great. Keep the questions coming. We'll, we'll continue to get as many of those as possible. But tell us, you know, about your speaker lineup. You guys do a great job with speakers as well. Kind of walk us through um, the lineup of the Prime Ultra, and uh, you know, tell us a little bit more about those. So I'll tee it off, Larry. I know you you feel like you're getting the horse there, but uh, you know, we have two full on speaker lines: our Prime series and our Ultra series. Our Ultra series are reference loudspeakers. Um, you know, throughout both of them, we have, uh, you know, 
full uh, five channels of audio. So we have tower speakers, uh, three-way center channels, which is truly an important thing that uh, I'm going to make Larry tell you about here in a few minutes. Um, are, uh, you know, we, we wanted to create center channels that were um, you know, truly anchored the front stage. It's one, it's the more under, I think the most underrated speaker within a home theater. Yeah. People often, um, and brands, I think to some extent, sometimes don't put enough into those. Uh, so we really wanted to create standout center channels. It's the most important and, one. It's the most I mean, important speaker in a home theater. Yes. Yep. And Larry, maybe you, this is your chance to, to espouse the benefits of a three-way center channel versus some of the two ways that are out there. Well, I, uh, we just talked about this too on our, uh, our live event. And, you know, if you look at two-way center versus three-way center, obviously you're going to get more, more range, more flexibility, highs, mids, lows, kind of everything in between. But the biggest benefit of going to a three-way center channel is a typically wider sound stage, and a two-way center channel, because it's typically two woofers and a tweeter in the middle, they're more directional. They tend to create, and Gary, our CEO, likes to talk about the, the, the uh, lobing effect, where it's really directed towards where it's aiming. So if you're like me, you have a big family of five, you know, my wife and my three boys are sitting downstairs watching a movie. Well, whoever's directly in front of it would get that experience. But by going to a three-way center channel and then some of the advancements we have in our tweeter, the expanse and the soundstage and the spread is pretty dramatic. So no matter where you are in a room, you tend to get a better vocalization out of a three-way center channel. You handle more range, you know, whether it's Darth Vader and Star Wars, or the singing we were talking about earlier in The Greatest Showman. You kind of get everything in between. And then the subtlety of whispers from a movie like 1917 or Annabelle Creation, you get all of that detail. And that's a real perk and benefit of a three-way center channel. And uh, to add on to that for our Ultra line, we have uh, our Ultra Towers, which is our flagship speaker. Um, it's this sort of sweeping design with no parallel cabinet. Uh, mentions and then it's got dual opposing eight inch woofers so it's you know getting down to that 30 hertz range um and and as uh, larry mentioned earlier i think all of our speakers are timbre matched so you can actually blend any of the ultra series with any of the prime series it allows you to create custom systems based on your room and you know certain preference preferences you have for listening and uh and style so we really wanted to create speakers that were uh you know interchangeable within systems but provided sort of uh, you know additional gains as you moved up the line and you know our prime pinnacle which is part of the five point giveaway 5.1 giveaway you guys are doing um you know we did something kind of unique with that where it has three dual ports all that are ported with separate sub enclosures within the speaker and this allowed us to create deeper low frequency extension and more bass output but from that sort of traditional um you know handsome classic looking tower speaker design whereas the ultra tower is truly sort of this like eye-catching, you know, amazing looking. Again, it's like it's wide bass, dual opposing eights. It's really sort of a, an interesting looking speaker. The Prime Pinnacle gets you about 85% of the way there, uh, it, but it has a much more traditional form factor, which I think fits in, in more uh, rooms. So, um, you know, all of the products that we offer have sort of a, a very un a distinct purpose. And we try not to just, you know, re rebadge re re speakers and, uh, you know, give them a new look, but have them do exactly the same thing. It's important for us to have differentiation amongst all the products. Well, you know, what's amazing to me about them is just the cabinet work you guys do. You don't see that, but you guys have most of the speakers that are three-way, the mid-range drivers in a separate enclosure, the center channels are done that. You do all kinds of bracing and separate enclosures in your speakers that are just kind of really unheard of at that price level. Yeah, it yeah. creates... Yeah, it's a it's very different, like you're saying, from other products in a category in the same price. You know, you can go up and you can see a speaker that's a two way or three way, and you can push on a driver, and you'll see each driver in a cabinet move because they're yeah. all in the same cabinet. And all that does is create distortion when you start getting loud or playing something deep. When you walk up to the pinnacle, you push on it, and each of those three uh, woofers are in their own cabinet. The mid range is in its own cabinet. The tweeters in its own cabinet. So you don't get any interference or muttering between the frequencies either. They're all too popular. To, to add on to, to Leon's point, we uh, we put a lot into the finish of our speakers too. I mean, I, obviously the sound quality is of, of utmost importance, but we want it to look like a high-end speaker, even though you may not be paying those, you know, astronomical high-end prices. And so, you know, the piano gloss finish, it's, you know, six layers of hand-applied lacquer. It looks truly high-end. And, uh, you know, even the wood grain finishes sort of have that appeal as well. Um, so we really work hard to make sure that you you know, no matter what you're getting, you feel like it's a high-end product and, uh, you know, it will fit within that realm. Yeah, absolutely. 
Uh, obviously, you know, we've got them on display in both of our showrooms. So if you're passing through the Carolinas, going your way to the mountains or the beach, you know, check them out. We'd love to love to do a full SVS demo with a lot of the great tracks that we uh, have already talked about. I don't know if we can predict the future, but this is an interesting question. Uh, just in terms of, of wireless in general, right? You know, you guys obviously do a great job with your prime wireless. At some point, um, do you feel that things will move totally towards wireless for, for a full home theater experience? Or do you feel like there's always going to be a need for, uh, you know, sort of a dedicated hardwired uh, traditional setup? That's a good geek question. So yeah. um, the, and I've seen uh, him comment on some other stuff too. So I, I will tell you, I'm I, the, opportunity to go wireless is cool, but you're always going to need power or deal with wireless batteries, which is a technology that's coming down the road. And think of every time you add a wireless product to your home, especially if it's a network wired product or something that's going on, on your internet, it just slows down everything else. Um, and that's what a lot of people don't think about when you start adding more products to your home that are wireless, that it can create issues elsewhere, but um, it's totally coming. And I think uh, if you go to the technology shows, you'll see that. You'll see things coming that are wireless. You'll see uh, different wiring solutions. There's, you know, wire that you can put on your wall that's flat that you can paint. So there's there's solutions for that, too. And then you guys can go out and do some really great installations to kind of hide the wiring as well. But uh, I'm a wired guy just because it always works. Right. Right. Yeah, I'm a wired and, too, Larry, but I think it's definitely coming. Yeah. It's uh I think in the next 10 years, it's going to be way more prevalent than it is right now. But it still has quite a few bugs to work out currently. Yeah, it may be wishful thinking on my side, but I, I still adhere to the fact that people are going to desire that one best listening experience in their home. So while you're not going to have, you know, five channels of wired audio in every room, you may have that one space where you're willing to you know, run speaker wire through the wall or have the conduits or however you want to do it if that's the issue you know reducing cable clutter but i agree i mean it's got to go wireless as far as you know just background listening and all of those things that that's where the future is headed without question and user interfaces too i think people want an elegant smartphone app that runs it all and it does yeah. it intuitively without a lot of headaches and you know sets up really simply um so all of those things are going to be important factors in driving absolutely Cool. We got time for maybe one or two more questions. Uh, if, the, if there's one that jumped out to you guys, we'll, we'll tackle it. And if not, we'll, we'll try to maybe uh, throw in one or two more. I, think I saw I one see. that was, uh, are room acoustic treatments important? And the answer is heck yes. You definitely have to have them. Yeah, they can make a huge yeah, difference. Huge and stuff. difference. I think there's a lot of confusion around how to set them up and, and you know what you need to do there. But I agree, the people who have used them generally have really positive remarks about how much it's improved. Because your room is part of your system. Like, don't don't make any mistake about it. It's a huge part in how your system performs and having those treatments just you know cleans up a lot of issues. Yeah. Well, it just makes dialogue and everything so much easier to understand. You hear all these little micro dynamics and subtle things when the room's treated properly. It's, it's a tremendous difference. <laughs> this like uh, I know Bryce just said he wants everyone to leave, so he's the only one present for the giveaway. So we're, it's time to uh, we'll give away our first giveaway here for the Prime Wireless. So Dawson, congratulations! You're going to be the winner for our, our Prime Wireless giveaway. Nice. So this is directed to you guys at SBS. You know, uh, what do you guys think of the the juicy name Prime Wireless and what in, what went into that? It's like filet mignon for your ears. What do you want? Uh, yeah, no, I would say. Uh, you know, we had our, our Prime series, which are uh, passive speakers that launched prior, and we wanted to have some level of continuity because the Prime wireless powered speaker system looks similar and uses a lot of the same you know, driver and uh, tweeter materials. Um, so a lot of it was about just the continuity of, of the name and, uh, you know, the sort of brand that we built behind it. Um, so I, I think there's, uh, you know, there's no real great story I could share, although I could probably make one up on the fly. I think that might be disingenuous. So I'll just it stick is, it with, uh, it fit within our existing products and, and that's what we rolled with. Nice, nice. Well, congrats, Dawson. We will reach out to you uh, and congrats. I, I know it's something you're gonna love for, for sure. Uh, maybe one more question here. Anything else you guys see? I guess maybe we could talk a little bit about just Atmos and where that's going. You know, what are you guys, if you had to look into the future a little bit, you know, what are you, uh, what are you seeing and, and where do you think that's going? Well, I took a read today from uh, 
one of the major uh, recording studios in the UK about how they've just now installed a Dolby Atmos mastering studio and they had all these pictures of, of different musicians who have been recording there. So I think music has a great potential to drive Atmos listening. And I hope it does. I think the you know, we we're talking about Blu-ray concerts. That's an atmosphere that you can create overhead effects that really kind of draw you into that experience. So I, I hope that, you know, we start seeing a lot more music streaming uh, in Dolby Atmos. Yes. Yeah, there's some title stuff now you can get. That's it's really amazing. Yeah, Atmos Music is cool. We we got to learn a little bit about how they make it uh, last month and how it's done in the studio, and it was really cool to hear about that. So it's a very different uh, mixing experience. Oh, I think, and I think for uh, home theater, we'll we'll see more speakers. Yes. Yes. Like absolutely. Speakers. And I think gaming could drive it too. I mean, headphones get you so far but when you have like the tactile feeling of a subwoofer rumbling an explosion and sort of that you know immersive height effect that sort of draws you into some you know scene that you're playing out through a, through a game i mean that's going to be a, a potential uh, huge driver and, and larry correct me if i'm wrong but a lot of the receivers up convert so you get those height effects from games natively you do yeah. it yes. sounds some of them sound great some of them just sound like an echo but if you get a really good you know, triple A title game, they're designed for immersive audio. And, you know, next month we have some new game systems come out that are a big part of their story around the new uh, PlayStation and new Xbox are immersive audio. So I, I'm excited for both of them. Awesome. Well, uh, guys, it's been a, a ton of fun. You know, Nick, Larry, thanks for your time. It's been a, a lot of fun. You guys have been great to work with. All the folks at SBS have been incredible to work with uh, over the last you know six months or more. It's been a great partnership, and uh, thanks again for being part of this. We're excited to have you guys, and hopefully, we'll do it again sometime soon. Yes, absolutely. So well, now I appreciate you having. And and if I could just say congratulations on that system builder. I think people, especially now, you know, being more virtual than we ever have, like they're looking for that level of interactivity and personalization. Um, and, and so you guys really hit it out of the park with that thing. And I have to congratulate you. I think it was uh, so, an awesome for us to be able you. to have a giveaway associated with it. So uh, good luck with that. And I know it'll, it'll be really successful. Well, we really appreciate it. Uh, it's been a lot of work, a lot of back and forth. But, um, you know, again, we got sort of the uh, the version out now. And thanks again for everyone's comments and feedback. And thanks for uh, everyone who went in and entered the contest uh, and, and saved a home theater. And again, hopefully you had a great experience with it. Hopefully it helps you as you guys maybe move towards that next step in your home theater experience. And so now we're going to announce the winner of this amazing $3,000 giveaway. So little, uh, little virtual drum roll, if you will, our winner uh, for this month's giveaway is Ben Richards. I'm yep. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Ben, ben Roberts is just like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Right. All right. So um, Ben is going to be our lucky giveaway winner. So congratulations. We are excited for you. Thanks for joining. And again, guys, it's been a ton of fun. Uh, we are gonna be doing the same thing next month. So next month, we're gonna be heading over to our uh, turntable and powered speakers setup. So we're gonna be giving away our, our Riga Planar One turntable uh, and pair that with a uh, Peachtree M24 powered speakers. And we're also gonna be throwing in an audio device record care package uh, into that as well. So we just put it up. Feel free to go ahead and enter that giveaway now. Uh, and we'll see you guys again next month. Thanks again, guys, for being here. Thanks again to everyone who joined us from all over the country and, and all over the world. It's been a heck, heck of a lot of fun. Hope you guys found this uh, entertaining and, and educational. And uh, we will see you guys again next time. Thanks again. Thanks, everybody. Thank Congrats, you. man. That's a killer system. Yeah, yes. Enjoy. Thank you.